Hello, I'm Sam Dunn at Banger Films and welcome to Lock Horns. This is the first ever live stream in Banger Films history, so thanks for joining us. Uh, why we're here is because we're doing something that we've been wanting to do for over 10 years. In 2004, when we made our first documentary, Metal Headbangers Journey, we created the heavy metal family tree, a family tree that consists of over 200, maybe even 300 bands that tells us all about the history of heavy metal. But it's 10 years old. We're in 2015 now, so it's time to give us, uh, give it a facelift. And our first episode is the much debated and contentious genre of metalcore. And to join me on this perilous journey is none other than Liam Cormier, lead singer of Cancer Bats and Axe Wound. Hello, Liam. How Hello, are you, Sam. Man? Thanks for having me on the show, man. Bet, man. This is awesome. Liam is here because he knows a hell of a lot more about metalcore than I do. A little bit. <laughs> You like this? You like this style? Though. Oh, this is what I grew up on. Cool. Yeah, cool. this was like me as like a late teen growing video. into like okay, hardcore, punk, metal, video. metalcore. Yeah. Yes, I'm in. Good. <laughs> he's younger than me, so he's going to help me bring this up to date. Um, this also involves you guys, though, um, and that's a hugely important part of what we're doing today. Is it's really the first interactive thing we've done at uh, at Banger Films. So what we want from you is we want your comments as we're talking. We're gonna talk a lot, we like to talk um, about what you like, what you don't like, what you think should be changed, what bands should be removed, what bands should be added. We want your opinions because at the end of our little thing here, we're actually gonna add one, maybe two, maybe more bands to the chart uh, to, to bring it up to speed. And so we have our producer, Lisa Latasur, who is here, who is off camera, who's gonna help us by ringing a bell and by prompting me when I forget stuff. And right now we're trying to fix some audio sync issues mm. that are happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just uh, hang on everybody, we're working on it. Something to bear in mind when you, when you recommend bands, Big part of why we did this uh, was we wanted it to be a document of bands that we felt had actually made an impact in metal. Uh, and that's kind of partly why it's outdated. It doesn't have all the latest bands on, on there. It's the bands that we feel unequivocally have made an impact. So yeah, for sure. I think it's important to bear in mind. Yeah. But we're missing a lot. And that it was done 11 years ago. <laughs> that's right. So uh, if you hear, a bell ring, cue bell. Oh, old school boxing bell, thank you, Lisa. That means we've been talking too much and it's time to move on. You ready for this? I'm ready. Cool. We're gonna talk about metalcore. What is metalcore? Liam, tell me your definition of what metalcore is. My definition of metalcore, at least the way that I understood it growing up as it was explained from the older hardcore kids, was that it's metal hardcore. So in the same way that there's punk hardcore, like the, you know, Bad Brains, Youth of Today, Gorilla Biscuits, that side of things, there's also metal hardcore where they're taking from, you know, older metal bands. And as, you know, big thing for me was that it was no solos. Mm -hmm. That was like the huge defining point. Mm -hmm. And usually songs being only, you know, two minutes long. And uh, I would say content-wise, mm -hmm. like definitely no Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. no Wizards, no any of that. It was usually political or... Just kidding. Per <laughs> You're like, I love Wizards. <laughs> but that was how I always understood it. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, okay, yeah. it's two-minute songs, no solos, just all the heavy meat and potatoes of metal. For sure. In this hardcore. Let me throw this in there. Uh, you know, maybe it's a feature of more of the newer metalcore bands, but and there's a lot of different phrases for it. Beauty and the Beast, Good Cop, Bad yeah, Cop, yeah. that kind of melodic meets guttural trade-off. Yeah, Sing trade Scream, off, Sing Scream Sing Hardcore. Scream seems to be kind of one of the trademarks of metalcore now. Yeah, totally. And I think that became a huge part of the scene. And I think defining it, especially uh, as bands started adding that in, it was like, okay, this is metalcore yeah. for sure. And then, where went the hair? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cutting your hair. Uh, I guess that kind of came back too. Yeah. It was sort of like, oh, well, whatever. But yeah, yeah it was definitely like short hair army fatigues yeah. and moshing yeah. as hard as you possibly could. So, I mean, in a way, it's interesting. It had a lot of the kind of core ingredients of metal, the powerful riffing, the great playing. It's obviously mm -hmm. super intense, technical, aggressive, yeah. fat, a lot of speed, you know, um, like that fast tempo to mid tempo kind of shifts going on. But then there's all these kinds of other little elements that were coming from punk or hardcore coming, mm -hmm. coming in as well. Yeah, yeah. totally. Cool. Good definition. Yeah, I feel like that Good works. Job. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Now we turn to what's wrong with the chart. So the next step is we want to take a look at the chart and we want to hear from you guys what's wrong with this. We got COC, DRI, suicidal, stormtroopers of death, chromags, biohazard, machine head, earth crisis, hate breed uh, on the original chart. So let's have some comments. What are you thinking about? What we've got up there. Okay, first comment comes from David Polidoro, Facebook. You guys got it all wrong. This is a good start. <laughs> Metalcore is not the mid to late 80s bands that started cross-pollinating hardcore punk with elements of metal. Metalcore would be more the newer bands playing heavy music that they that think they are hardcore when in reality they're combining the most corny elements of metal and Ooh. hardcore into one steaming pile of crap. Thank you, David. Well articulated. Yeah. People don't care, clearly. No, <laughs> just cutting straight to the point. <laughs> um, Fast Bass Whammy, YouTube, says the new wave of American metal branch seems like a much more accurate list. Metalcore is the blending of Swedish death and hardcore punk. There absolutely needs to be riffing from at the gates mashed with 1982 DC hardcore. Yeah. So, some Which I would agree, yeah. yeah. What, do you, what, do you, what do you think about those comments? I definitely think that that's, that's true. A lot of the stuff that you guys have in metalcore, especially at the top of the list, is mm -hmm. kind of what I would associate more with crossover. Right. Uh, which I always understood as like, these were thrash bands that were crossing over into you know different territories, mm -hmm. and that's what influenced hardcore or metal hardcore. Yeah, I want to, of course, Anyone who knows about you know early DRI crossover was actually an album yeah. title, right? And um, I think that's why it became so like crossover thrash, crossover metal. Yeah, it was like yeah, DRI is like that band. So I don't know if I would necessarily call some of these bands metalcore then. In right. That case, and I think that's kind of where those guys. Right. Are okay. From. So look what we have. Yeah. Ta-da! We're like the Vanna Whites yeah. of metal. <laughs> Bam. There we go. Crossover. We have a new subgenre to the chart. So I guess the question is, Liam, which bands do you think should be shifted over to crossover? I think for sure the top four. So Corrosion, DRI, Suicidal, SOD. Yeah. Uh, which can I? Let, let's do it. Yeah, uh, we got some, oh. a lot of people who agree with you on the live chat. We've got yes. Zach. Who also thinks COC, DRI, SOD, and suicidal for sure need to go. Right. So can I? Let's move it. Let's take that consensus. Horror Master, same thing. Suicidal, yep. oh, DRI, gotta go. Nails. But he says they gotta go to thrash. We're gonna go to crossover. We made right these now. as magnets for a reason. Yeah. We're highly opinionated yet adaptable humans. Yeah. yeah. Things okay. that can always be okay. moving. Now we're getting somewhere. That's gotta so, stay up there. I think some of the tougher ones are, I think. Beyond a doubt, Chromags is a huge influence on metal hardcore. Right. Would they still be considered crossover? I think time frame, like they were definitely putting out records when DRI were yeah. and all of these bands were. Yeah. So I would still argue that you could put Chromags under crossover. Ooh. Bold move. If not, then you would put them at the top of the metal core. Let's put Chromags over. Let's okay. see what people see what, say. See what anger we what get. What do people think about Liam's bold conviction that Chromags indeed belongs in crossover? As, as Dan the party man agrees with you. He'd put Chromags on crossover also. I would put them at like that tipping point, right? Right. Because right. Exactly. I think what Chromags were doing definitely then influenced. Biohazard, Hatebreed, and then Earth Crisis. Yep. You know, as like the founding crossover into what then is like metalcore. Awesome. 
So glad you're here. I'm learning so much. <laughs> the question, though, I guess that this raises is... Is cro a hardcore band, though? Says uh, people over here. They're saying I think there's, they're a hardcore band. I think there's hardcore kids right now wearing camouflage shorts, wearing an Age of Quarrel shirt that would argue indefinitely that cro are a hardcore band. Yeah, for sure. But for I sure. think that's where there's that gray area between this kind of hardcore of yep. Discharge, Black Flag, you know, and metalcore, but I think it's because of the sing scream side of, yep. I think if it was metal hardcore and yep. punk hardcore, people would be like, yeah, cro -Mags. This is my brain, is we're gonna break the yeah. internet with all these ideas. <laughs> I mean, cro it's in my brain, almost feeds directly out of all this stuff. Oh, 100%. I mean. So like, I hear you, whoever told us that cro may have a more hardcore affinity, there, there's bands on this chart which like float around, like bands like Opeth who were once one thing and have become another. Oh, like where same with like Typo Negative. Yeah, like they played shows with all these yeah, bands. Machine you Head's know? another good example yeah. of that. Okay, we've heard the bell. Time to move on. We yes, want Lisa. to know uh, who's first then. Yep. Who's Who belongs now? Now that we've moved all these bands over to Crossover, who should be at the top of the metal core Genre now how we ordered these bands bit of background was we actually originally ordered them in When their first album came out so oh, it is okay. a chronological oh, Okay order because like how so, yeah. we we're like how the hell else are we gonna do this mm -hmm. right? It's not order of like Preference or importance. It's more just like okay these guys put out their first record before these guys etc 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 Yeah, but maybe for the purposes of today. We don't have yeah, to totally adhere to that Some of these come into question then too. Yeah, yeah. okay fair enough So um, yes, the YouTube chat says it should be hate breed hate breed I also would agree mm -hmm. that I think that hate breed could be at the top of the metal core I I do realize that there's bands like Integrity, you know, bands like that that mm -hmm. did come before that influenced, yep. you know, Hatebreed, but I think for the band that really embodies everything yep. that Metalcore is, yep. maybe except for the Sing Scream, but I think in terms of like no solos, brutally honest songs, like powerful, yeah. heavy, and you hear tons of, you know, Entombed, uh, mm -hmm. Anthrax, Sepultura, like right. all those riffs right. fused into this right. new hardcore. Yeah, it's a bit of a hybrid. vague concept, but it seems the hate breed. There was something more modern about their approach yeah. than everything that a lot of the er certainly a lot of this early stuff. There was something much more metallic yeah. and modern about their sound. And I think too, if we're going back to like dress code, like nobody looked harder than Jamie Josta. There like you go. Camo, hoodie, yeah. like yeah. army hat. Killing it. Well, there's, a, there's quite a consensus. I think we can take hate breed and. Okay, up. there it goes. I'm gonna put them. Good up the job. Top. Yes. Maybe this is what all this is revealing too is that maybe we shouldn't have ordered the bands the way we ordered them in the original chart. Maybe we should have been thinking more about the band that goes at the top is actually the band that kind of spawned it, yeah. even though they might have put an album out later. You know what I mean? Anyway, it's a tough call. It's hard. As you can see, science it's not an easy hard, thing. Kids. Science, science is, is hard. hard, okay? Okay, what's next? Yes, Lisa? Machine Head. Machine Head, okay. Is Machine Head Metalcore? I think that's probably I think worth we have a little some discussion. Fan comments we about do, that okay. Well, let me, let me take a look. Okay. Where do we have a Machine Head comment? Okay, here with Dan Burton, Facebook. There's crossover, there's hardcore, there's Machine Head. None of these bands are metalcore. Ouch! Um, and that was all the comments we got from about Machine Head. Is that right, Lisa? Or do we have anything else? There might be a couple more in there. Okay. Well, we can we can we can take a look. What's your opinion about Machine Head? I think Machine Head's tough because they've kind of existed for so long. Mm -hmm. You could put them in so many different categories. Like sure. you could put them in thrash, but you could also put them in new wave of American metal. Yep. You know, like with the newer records that they've put out. So yep. it's definitely a tough call of where to yeah. put them. Another comment here, Oliver Flower on Facebook says, Machine Head are not metalcore. They are just metal. To say they're metalcore is an insult. Which reveal, let's set that aside. I mean, to say that something's an insult, we were talking about that the other day. There was a time, maybe that time has passed now, metalcore was something bands didn't want to be labeled yeah, as. Yeah, like very much wanted to be distanced from. And I mm -hmm. think it was because of that Sing Scream, you know, kind of 
later end of metalcore. Like right. when Cancer Bass was first starting in 2005, we were like, we're a hardcore band. Like that's all we wanted to be labeled as. Yeah. And if you were like, oh, it's metalcore, it's like, ah, oh, that feels so like not what we are. Yep. Even, you know, when I'm arguing that Hatebreed, like that's one of our direct influences. <laughs> so I, I do see where it becomes like a touchy kind of subject yeah, yeah. Where, where bands don't identify with it. You know what I've learned over making these documentaries that that happens in almost every subgenre. You take a, you take new metal for example, early corn record, even some of what are considered to be the proto new metal records like Sepultura Roots, mm -hmm. some of the Faith No More records. A lot of people like those records. Yeah, they're like as it evolves, as it becomes more commercially viable. It becomes a dirtier word. Same thing happened with glam metal. Early Motley Crue, early Quiet Riot, mm -hmm. Van Halen. Yeah. This is all stuff that people want to hang their hats on. But once you get to the more glammy bands, people are like, oh, it's not a good thing. Yeah. So. so it's like the suits have ruined it, basically. <laughs> That's right. That's why we didn't wear our suits. That's today. why we didn't wear yeah. our suits. Today. Cool. What's next? Uh, lots of people have their opinions about what should happen with Machine Head. Okay. Johnny says they're thrash. Cliff says they're a new wave of American heavy metal. Everett says they're groove metal. Dominator Patrick, one, Pat also says groove metal, not thrash, Pierre groove. So I think they got to float like on their own right now. There yeah. are these bands that were saying before, you know, Opeth is one, Machine Head is another could probably come up with a few more. Yeah, I think there's a couple even in some Which of the bands other. that really changed their sound over the years, you know, it's almost like they maybe belong in more than one place. Yeah. So. I think if anything, you know, uh, yeah, you put New Wave of American Metal, I think is a, a current place where yeah. like, yeah. I think Machine Head is definitely holding it down. So what do we do with Machine Head? This is the big question. Do we just sort of set them aside? Just get rid of them for Think now. Think about it. Maybe yeah. we just need to set them over here to be continued. Yeah. Maybe that's <laughs> to the be best brought up way. maybe in a later. So now we only have three bands left. Yeah. What are the where do the other metalcore bands come from then? Yeah. So I was looking at your New Wave of American Metal yep. list, and I actually think that there's a lot of bands on that list that could be considered metalcore. Okay. And I think almost more were, if we're going in the chronological order, I think are considered metalcore bands right. uh, in how they started and maybe became New Wave of American Metal. So which bands in particular would you would you move over? No um, pressure, no pressure. For sure, I would say Killswitch. Killswitch? I think Killswitch okay. started off early as metalcore. Okay, uh, put them there. I would also say Azalee Dying, Okay. for sure. Yep, yep. There we go. Um, and then tough ones are Darkest Hour and Unearth. For sure. Like super heavy metal, but I grew up seeing them playing like floor shows yep. at the Oakville Pine Room. Sure. You know, which is, that was like the breeding ground for hardcore. Yeah. So yeah. also Darkest Hour being on Victory, like that was like the Yeah, it's the partly label. where your home is. Yeah. For sure. I think, so, so there's I Unearth. Do we have a Darkest Hour? I don't think we have a Darkest Hour. We might have to... Trying to get some uh, consensus on Unearth. From, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure about Unearth. Unearth's tough. Like eight string they, guitars. They're like, like they're very metal. To yeah. Me. They don't have the same kind of vocal approach. That kind of raspier, more hard. I think the heart, the vocalist of Darkest Hour is a lot of what gave them that kind of more of a yeah. hardcore vibe. So maybe we just put. Internet says Unearth. Yes. Yeah. Unearth. Yes, internet. Fine. Don't listen to me. You listen to the <laughs> internet, kids. Okay, they're going right there. I think we need a Darkest Hour one. Do we need to draw one out? Yeah, we'll make one. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. We can, we can make no these. There's no rules on the internet. Yeah. Someone Just... here, Zach says, Unearth is the very definition of metalcore. Yeah, Stings of Conscience was wow. like... Some strong opinions. There's a lot of people there. moshing in the parking lot. Sorry, poor Kev Dig. I don't know any of the bands. That's okay, <laughs> though. <laughs> Well, this is a great place to learn about a new genre then. When we do Doom next week, the opinions are going to come in a lot more slowly. <laughs> Nicole, do wait, not give the week? internet this much power. Oh, Nicole. Nicole. <laughs> We're going to be on half she's really, She's really bummed. There we go. Okay, well, we've kind of tackled New Wave of American Metal. Those were the two, Liam, that you felt needed to be moved in. Yeah. Darkest Hour and Unearth. So we've dealt with that little beast. 
on our hands. What else do we need to do here, Lisa? We got any more comments coming in that are ripe for discussion? Uh, yeah, some, gr I mean, you know, a lot of people talking about uh, the bands that we should add. So we should talk about new bands we haven't discussed yet. Good point. I want to hear Good what uh, Liam thinks is the most important band that's not on yeah. here yet. So we're just thinking, yeah, what bands are not here at all yeah. that need to be thrown in here? One of the big things for me when I first saw your list and when you guys asked me to be on the show mm -hmm. was uh, the fact that Converge right. isn't on your list. I think that's like one of the most important bands next to Hatebreed right. as far as metal hardcore goes and kind of pushing the genre. Cool. And you guys were nice enough to make me there a magnet. There you go. We made you yes. a Converge magnet. Um, so I might actually, no offense to Killswitch, but I might actually yeah, yeah, yeah. change some order. There we so go. Let's, let's order and make some room properly. Well, well, Absolutely. Still give respect to, right? Cool. There we go. Anybody else, in your opinion, that okay. is missing completely? Um, one of the other bands that I don't know if we have a specific magnet for it, but mm -hmm. one of the bands that we were talking about before that I think was huge, especially in the Sing Scream yep. metalcore, yep. is uh, Poison the Well. Okay. Our album, Opposite of December, was yep. huge in terms of pushing that sound. Right. And uh, I think really leading to bands like Killswitch, as they dying, you know, yeah. having that, that good cop, bad cop yep. vocal. Very cool. So, so Poison the Well it is. What are the fans telling us there, uh, Lisa? Anybody else saying we need? Well, there's one missing according to a bunch of people, including Dan and uh, Patrick, which is Trivium. Oh, okay. Trivium. I also would agree. You think they are more metalcore? Well, Trivium we have in the new wave of American metal, which 10 years ago made sense. What yeah, think? I, I think in the same way that Killswitch and As Lately Dying, like especially As Lately Dying and, and Trivium, I think are, are so close. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, like yeah. when I'm talking about like Bullet For My Valentine and other bands like that, that you would put in New Wave. I mean, they're not American, but yep. in that newer kind of scene, it's yep. like, well, traditionally when those bands first came out, you were like, oh, this is like yeah, yeah. textbook metalcore. I think this is partly what this is revealing is that when we put the chart together originally, it was like there were certain genres that seemed to just they they were part of a moment, mm -hmm. and then there's and then there were genres that just seemed to be continuing. And I think that that changes. Like I think when we put this out ten years ago, this was this was what was exploding, and it yeah. was like okay, here we go. But now people don't use this word anymore, and ironically, it's, it's like metalcore. Yeah. Is is still how you would describe a lot. You use that as a descriptor. I get off topic. Uh, I feel we need a bit more uh, input from our YouTube chat on Trivium, because some people think they're trash. Uh -huh. I mean thrash. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. No, that was Ugh, your words. <laughs> well, I was reading Trivium is not thrash. Fuck off, and then <laughs> I got slipped up. Yeah. Uh, but apparently, uh, people have a difference of opinion on Trivium. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do uh, think. Trivium has a lot of metal, especially hair length, right? For and sure. But well, they don't and, have hardcore elements. And solos, like definitely have yeah. like solos in their music. I, that's where a lot of it is is tough. Yeah. I think it's almost easier when you're going back to the like yeah. original like for and also I think back to the the good cop bad cop thing. I think that if the bands that went down that path, like that's that's contentious territory. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and it's one solos, thing to be. Like, Maiden Definitely. and all kind of the melodic operatic thing and the it's another thing to be a death metal band and be all guttural. But I think once you start to combine the two, yeah, you're kind of it's like the two gangs are meant not meant to be yeah. together. Do you know what I mean? It's like gang warfare. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's why a lot of people have these strong opinions about these bands that started incorporating that thing into their into their music. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, Slayer God says, "What the hell? Trivium cannot go." on the list so maybe we'll just highly, leave them where they are highly contentious i don't know i may just pull you know rank and maybe they need to kind of be here with machine head i think maybe we can resolve to be unresolved yeah. on this a little bit i think there's like too much debate yeah where do they belong gray area gray <laughs> gray genre <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think we're getting near the end. Are we not, Lisa? Or do we have more comments coming in? We got lots of comments okay. coming in. Uh, some people are asking, where is Dillinger Escape Plan? No good question. See, yeah, I also brought this up when we first started talking about the show. Because to me, again, Dillinger 
calculating infinity was like this is metalcore, yeah. like to the max, right. and had all of those elements of you know technical, angry, you yeah. know, but still like short, powerful, all that. For um, sure. But you guys had them down in prog metal, correct? Which yeah, yeah, like they are you know what I would think of as a band pushing again. I mean, metal. I think history changes, right? Ten years ago, when we were putting together the prog metal list. These guys seem to be sort of representing, oh, well, this is where, this is where prog could go. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? The time signature shifts, a lot of angular riffing, um, you know, a lot of long songs and kind of expansive concepts. And this is like all the things that seem very prog to us. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't straightforward metalcore. It wasn't straightforward anything. So as, as, as we've been saying, like it changes as time passes. Yeah. Like, See, I would argue that, again, in the same way that, like, Converge, like, where they started, mm -hmm. uh, Dillinger, like, New Jersey basement shows. Right. Like, that was, like, yeah. so hardcore. Or Part I guess that. in the same way, yeah, like, looking at Unearth, looking at those kind of things. Part of that foundation. So maybe we will put them up there. So in with Metalcore. In. This is in there. We're running out of room. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa. The internet says you should put them on Mathcore, which we don't have yet. Oh. Yeah. I mean, that's the you thing, too, what? is that I think, like, in that... I'm going to write out a math core. You'll write out a math core. Well, this raises a whole other question. Light crossover, we don't have enough genres. Yeah. And I, I think that is, like... Throw that puppy on there. Yeah, that's, that's tough. Because in the same way that's that it's, like, point. metal hardcore... Yeah, and math is prog. It's Super right. Tech. So maybe yeah. what we were dealing with in, like, 2004 was, like... I can't remember, like math core, core maybe was a term people were starting to throw around. Yeah, yeah, I definitely remember that. It's kind of one of those things that, like, we don't know if it's a genre yet, yeah. though, so we're not going to put it on the chart. I still would, I, because I think there's only a lot of, like, really, like, uh, specific math core bands, like, yeah. that you would put in there. But, I mean, it's your treat, man. Like, it's a small but cherished yeah. branch. Yeah, where's Ludite clone, it's right? Small They're math core. <laughs> It's a small but very complex branch. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Anything else from the the people of the internet world, Lisa Latasur? Well, I think we're ready to talk about the brand new bands that people have been suggesting. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Here we go. Lots of comments. Craig Thero on Facebook uh, lists as I lay dying, Kill Switch Engage, Shadow Fall, Unearth and older Avenged Sevenfold. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe Avenged Sevenfold yeah, is the two. one band we haven't really talked about. Yeah, I would say first two albums for sure. Okay. Uh, Avenged Sevenfold are definitely Basically what's bands. happening is Metalcore is turning, look at this thing. Grabbing everyone. It's like it needs its <laughs> own tree. Like it's not gonna fit on the poster anymore. Thrash Maniac 99 on YouTube says, Ringworm as I lay dying, Atreyu bleeding through on earth every time I die, Parkway Drive, terror. Overcast, Botch, Integrity, and Coalesce. Yeah, see, those are some of the ones that I would say, yeah, Ringworm, Integrity, Botch. I guess it just depends on how complicated. Yeah. I think Botch are a super influential band. Right. Like, that's, you know, that led down the style that, like, Norma Jean, who were wildly successful. Yeah. Bands yeah. like that, yeah. I think uh, you could add on. I guess it just depends on how big you want your tree to be. Yeah. Because I think looking at some of the other... Like older ones, it's like, oh, max, you'll have like 10 bands. Whereas we could name off like 30 bands. It's true. It was a limitation when we put this thing together. It was like we yeah, couldn't really so, fit more than yeah. like 12 <laughs> bands in that little box. Yeah. So we had made some tough choices. Well, there's a lot of uh, thumbs up for uh, Avenged Sevenfold. Okay. All right. I would agree with that. Okay. Too. Well, yeah. they're in there. We're just running out of room. We'll, we'll put them there. They belong. I think just to recap, yeah, Math Core maybe, Machine Head Trivium, not so sure. Definitely crossover yeah. and metalcore is 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 a monster. Um, here's another list. I think there's a few bands in here that we haven't heard about yet. August Burns Red, uh, Overcast. We had all that remains. All shall perish. Heaven shall burn. Yeah, whole bunch of bands. I so again, bands. yeah, in the way that I think it could keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do think some of those newer bands, like people have mentioned, Parkour Drive, yeah. August Burns Red. Um, you could also say Devil Wears Prada, mm -hmm. uh, even Bring Me the Horizon. Like, yeah. is that getting into deathcore or is that 
metalcore. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Are these bands metalcore or, again, like mathcore, are we missing yeah. other genres? Or like the new wave of American metal, is there a new wave of international metalcore that you would say? You like... heard it here first. <laughs> Just coined it. <laughs> nice job. So I'd like to read some of the band suggestions that are coming in right now on the uh, YouTube chat. Yes. Which uh, include from James Pierce the Veil and asking Alexandria. Okay. Um, we've got uh, All That Remains, yep. Zach was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, Walls of Jericho came mm -hmm. in yeah. on, mm -hmm. off the Twitter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Detroit Metalcore. Yeah, man. And there's no question that the overwhelming band people want added is Parkway Drive. Parkway Drive. Yeah, Interesting. Let's facelift it. That's official. Do we have a magnet? Not yet. Did I put it up? We did not. Let's draw a Parkway Drive. So is this this is the big moment? This is the moment. Or are they at the top of the I, new wave of international metalcore? I feel they are at this point the runaway audience choice. Oh, okay. The runaway audience choice choice as the band to add to the metalcore genre on the heavy metal family tree is Parkway Drive. It's so important. We're going to put it on top <laughs> of the title because we've run out of room. And because we're running out of room. And because they're so important. And they're great guys. To the internet people. And uh, Hunt the Dinosaur. Never heard of that. Is that a joke? I don't know that one. Nope. <laughs> we, don't know, we don't know if you're joking. <laughs> great. My four-year-old son would love that band. Oh, Hunt the Dinosaur. Great title. Toddlers. Um, Toddlers. Can you tell a metalcore band by their name? Uh, there is a bit of a joke mm -hmm. about that, like the uh, From Autumn to Ashes, Poison the Well, right. the like kind of poetic, yeah. romantic. Yeah. Uh, Bullet for My Valentine as an example too of like a great poetic kind of metalcore name, yeah. which I think, again, if we're going to do camo pants and short hair, you could also say that. Bullet right for My Valentine is getting some traction. Okay, Bullet for My I Valentine. I do agree that like especially, I think all their records have a lot of like, you know, fundamental metalcore to it. And mm -hmm. I also, just even from talking to Matt, like he was influenced by the same bands that, you know, Hatebreed, like Entombed, uh, Sepultura, like, but then also, yeah, seeing hardcore bands like VOD and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. I think that they're definitely a metalcore band. And a great bunch of guys too. And we have one more band that has come up. Atreyu. Atreyu, for sure. Big band. Not mathcore. <laughs> The like metalcore. <laughs> These are like the yeah. Yeah, we got the pit here. Atreyu, yeah, big band. Obviously, a band that, you know, I remember there were bands that were just starting to make a important foothold when we put the chart together. I mean, Mastodon in two thousand and four was only just really starting to like mm -hmm. become a band that most people in metal were aware of. Right? Yeah, and it takes time. Yeah. So yeah, ten years is a long time. So yes, definitely a tray. We got a healthy metalcore list. Good job, Liam. Yeah. Could have done it without you. Thanks, man. Thanks for your time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to Daniel, Lisa, Lana, Andrew, and Liam for the first ever uh, live stream at Banger Films. We did uh, it. Lock horns, metalcore. Well, you even drew blood. Whoa. <laughs> right. Hey. Pretty metal. Uh, I'm, I'm now much more metalcore than I was <laughs> at the beginning of this live stream. Lastly, tune in the same time next week, Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Do metal on Lockhorns. <laughs>